Alrighty then, hey this is Megalovaniac yet again, and I'm here to start a short series of Don't Starve Shipwrecked. I've been wanting for quite some time to do a Don't Starve series, but as time went on I realized it would be very difficult to do. I mean, I could just play through the game like normal, but here's the thing, I've been playing Don't Starve literally since the early stages of beta. If I recall correctly, the update that I actually started playing was when they added hounds and I believe it was birds. Either way, yeah, it was very early on as far as the game goes. Not exactly alpha testing, but still, I've been at it for a while, so I'm very familiar with how this game works. And honestly, the vanilla game isn't challenging for me. Even Reign of Giants, I am able to take on pretty easily. However, I haven't met, spent a whole lot of time in Shipwrecked, and I'm still figuring it out. So there's actually a... Well, I was going to say chance of failure. I'm guaranteed going to fail this. If I make it through a year, it'll be literally going through things I've never seen before. And I think that'll make for a much more interesting series. So I'm going to go ahead right in. And also, this is kind of an interesting note. I have never actually played this on console before. I, well, not never. I played Reign of Giants a little bit on my Wii U, but this is being played on my PS4 for one thing. I don't even know the controls. I'm just kind of going in, which... To be fair, Don't Starve, it doesn't have any sort of tutorial. It was kind of designed so that you're supposed to go in and figure it out as you go. It's very much a trial and error game. So I'm going to try to make a small series out of this. Hopefully I'll be able to make it decently far, because I am a little bit familiar with Shipwreck. I at least should be able to make it for the first through the first season or so. So, let's go ahead in. And of course, I'm going to be... Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. I'm going to be turning on Shipwrecked. Now for characters, I actually don't have anyone unlocked because this is my first time playing on the PS4. However, I do know all these characters pretty well. Wilson is the default character and he's by far not one of my favorites. Well, no. Well, you all can see the outlines here. This character is my favorite if you've played the game before. I, I'm not going to try to spoil it for anyone who hasn't played. It's kind of fun unlocking these characters if you know. This one's my favorite. Second favorite would probably be... I've actually played with a couple of the Shipwreck characters, and Shipwreck I like playing as this character quite a lot, or this guy. Either way, I'm not going to reveal who those were. Wilson isn't a bad guy, though. I'm uh, just going to make sure that... Yeah, okay, never mind. I forgot that in Shipwreck it's guaranteed to start on a specific season. In Reign of Giants, there's a chance you can start in Spring, which is a challenge in and of itself. Either way, let's go ahead and generate the islands. So, what makes Shipwreck so different from De Default Don't Starve, among many other things, is you could, of course, move through the water. But it's more than that. You are on very small islands, and there's a lot less food available in general. At least, in, in some forms. There are other ways that food is available to you than, like, there's fewer berry bushes, but you can also get seaweed. But seaweed doesn't provide the same kind of options, and also you have to deal with fishing as opposed to hunting for, for meat. You can also catch crabs instead of rabbits, but that's also fish food. There's all kinds of little details to it that are important to deal with. And I haven't fully acclimated to those changes, which is part of what makes it challenging. However, that being said, I actually really do like Shipwrecked, and I just haven't been playing it all that much because I kind of got on a burnout of Don't Starve around the time Shipwrecked got around. I still play it occasionally with friends and Don't, and don't Starve together, which is a whole different ballgame there. Although it's basically Reign of Giants, although it's considerably easier, but it has more challenges as the game goes on. Either way though, I'm going to be trying to give my sort of insight. I've had a friend who has played through a full year, and more than that, of Shipwrecked, and he knows how to do it. And he's told me some of the most important things I do need to know. I figured out myself how to, how to survive the first season and Hurricane Season, but I've never made it past Hurricane Season. Then there's Monsoon Season after that, and the Dry Season, which I'm told is absolute hell. And, typically playing this, I recommend just kind of skipping that particular scene, but... Because it actually does eat up a little bit of your day. And also, I notice my screen is off-center. Uh, I'm gonna need to actually figure out... Let's see, what's this? Okay, that's how I select something in my inventory. That's how I rotate the camera. And this is how I... Wait, wait. How do I... Okay, you know what? I'm going to just take a second to look at the controls. Okay, I got it now. So I can actually just kind of go like this, and then I have to use. Never mind, that ain't working. Oh, I have to use the left. Con oh, I was using the uh, pad instead of 
left control stick. By the way, on my TV, I actually can't see the tool pad. I can only see the little extension coming off of it. Either way, though, that's not important. What we need to focus on right now is we need to get some grass and twigs to be able to get out of the ground. That's the most basic of resources. And we should probably get some rocks and, of course, a way of getting off the island. Because this island, unless it's huge, which it seems to be a decent-sized island, at least bigger than some of the ones, I, some of the ones I've started on before, but it's not going to be able to sustain us for long and definitely not going to be useful enough in the long run. Yeah, actually, no, this is a pretty small island by the looks of it. So the question then becomes, are we going to be able to get a good raft before getting off the island or have to deal with a very basic one? By the way, these limpent rocks get us, well, limpents, which are effectively barnacles, which we can eat. Not exactly high quality food, but it's called don't starve. When you're avoiding starvation, you do what you can. So let's see, okay, three flint, that's pretty much what I wanted. I want to get a pickaxe going first of all, that way I can mine a rock and get some flint out of it, and I can get an axe going so I can chop some wood. Now, the question is, okay, we have snakes in that bush, so I want to avoid that. Okay, we actually have enough resources here, I think, yeah, to get a bait, uh, more advanced raft going. And by more advanced, that's a very relative term. The, um... You could get a wooden raft, or you can get a bamboo raft going early on. A wooden raft is by far the worst thing you can get, and a bamboo raft actually isn't much better. But it's better than nothing. Now, let me think this through before I make a pickaxe. I have three flint. I will likely get one more out of this. I need enough to make a fire tonight. I'm not pausing. I could... By the way, I should actually show I can look at the map here. Rotate there, I can zoom in like so. Okay, so this is our island that we have here. It shows all the little details. Not, well, not all the little details, but a lot of the little details. We don't actually have, oh wait, there's an extra flint up there. Okay, if there's an extra flint, then I'm not worried because I'm able to get enough to survive. I'd ideally like to make a hammer as well, and that's just some rocks. So that's part of why I want to make a uh, pickaxe immediately. So let's go ahead and get that pickaxe made now. Pickaxe takes two flint. I, managing your flint early on in the game is actually something that's pretty important to do if you ever want to make it off your first island, because you usually have a very limited supply of flint. And, ooh, we got two flint out of that. Perfect. So, and you need a flint, of course, to chop down trees with an axe, or get a machete to be able to chop down these uh, bamboo. So, there's a lot of things you have to consider. By the way, these little bits of debris, you can actually hammer. That's why I want to get a hammer going. Ooh, I didn't see this rock down here. Those other rocks do not actually contain flint. They only have, well, rocks inside of them. Okay, I have enough rocks now. I don't really want to get this niter right now. It's going to be useful later, but not right now. Okay. So, just get some basic rocks going. Rocks are useful for setting up bases, of course, but they can also be used to make a hammer. Takes a fair amount of resources, but you know what? I'm okay with that right now. Let's go ahead and equip that slug for a bit. So we can hammer this. I'm actually not going to hammer this one because this one contains something kind of important for later. It's actually, no, I'll, I'll carry it with me. It contains a boat repair kit. It always does. Now, talking about this, it seems like I know a lot about what I'm doing. I've actually just gone through the beginning of this game quite a few times before. Now, the other thing I want to do, of course, is make a an axe. Now, I probably should have been off the island by now. I've kind of been wasting time, but it's not that big a deal. Also, chopping coconut tr any uh, ah, palm trees has the risk of coconuts falling on you, which kind of sucks. But when you chop it, typically you get two coconuts, which can be used as food. So getting an extra coconut by it falling on your head isn't the end of the world. It's just that health is difficult to recover in this game, so it's not something you typically want to do. Okay, let's go ahead and equip our hammer right here, because this is a proper crate, and it could have an empty bottle inside. I'm going to go ahead and leave those there for now. They're not going... Nothing despawns in this game, so I'm not particularly worried about it. Ooh, and there's a seashell there. Gonna want to collect those for later. And the reason why I'm chopping palm trees, despite the risk of having a coconut fall on my head, is because, well, jungle trees do give more. They give more wood. They have the chance of finding something else of value in the tree. There's actually something more value I want to get out of these palm trees, which is the palm leaves. You see, in normal Don't Starve, you have to wait until you get a science machine before you can get a backpack going. But in this, you can get a thatch pack, I believe it's called, in survival. Luckily, I can't see the tabs there, but I've played this game so many times that I know the tabs by heart. 
So we can get a thatch pack now. It takes up our one of our inventory slots, but it basically expands our inventory just a little bit. Enough for it to be significant, enough for us to grab extra things as we're going. Of course, people's things stack, and you really do not want to mine these limpet rocks, by the way. I could have gotten some flint by doing that, but limpet rocks are very valuable because they'll refill on their own, and just coming by and getting a little extra food is very nice. And that's one thing that I have noticed more and more with Don't Starve Together, or Don't Starve, Shipwreck, rather, is that it is harder and harder to get food to get in this game compared to standard Don't Starve. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a machete here with some of our last little bits of flint. And this is what we're going to be using to get off the island. However, tonight... Actually, let me double check on something. I Since I can't see my inventory right now... Oh, I dropped it. Interesting. Um, let's see. Go down to fire. Okay, we do have enough to light a fire. I'll worry about that after I have some... Yeah, some bamboo built up. As well as some vines. I believe it would require four bamboo and three vines, if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to grab more than I need, just because I have very limited inventory space right now, and I want to survive. Ooh. And those are snakes. Of course, we could fight them right now. They're actually not that big a threat, although I'm not confident right now in my ability to kite. Because I'm very good at kiting on PC, but I am not used to it on console yet. And I, the last thing I want right now is to get screwed over by taking some early damage. And that bird right there... Oh, uh, sh oh god. I am not nearly as fast at doing this. Um, um, um. Uh, build. Build! Build! Why isn't he building it? <laughs> Christ, that was close! I don't know what was going on there. I was pressing the build button over and over again. Nothing was happening. And is this... No, it's not. Uh, for a second I thought the ground was flooding here from high tide. Jungle terrain doesn't actually flood from high tide. Everything else does. Or most other things do. Oh my god, that was terrifying. Oh. <sighs> yeah, nighttime, in case you haven't played this game before, darkness is instant death, effectively. Well, more like two hits till death, but still. I... I do not want to actually be... Uh, carrying around a bunch of pine cones on me. So I'm just going to plant these. Just pine cones aren't that valuable right now, and but we do have what well, we do have that's valuable are some eggs, which we can cook and eat. I'm getting used to the controls, so I'm not actually going all that fast with all these. So let's go ahead and cook this, these seeds up as well. We're about half hunger from a full day. These aren't going to add much, but they will buy us a little bit of time. Alright, let's get over to those berries as well and those limpets. And then, by the way, we can eat berries raw. Well, berries actually don't give you anything special for eating them cooked. However, pretty much everything else you want to eat cooked. Because it either gives you a little bit more hunger. There's that pirate parrot again. It either gives you a little bit more hunger or it uh, heals you a little bit. In the case of berries, it does heal you a little bit to cook them, but we're not exactly damaged right now except for that little bit of coconut. And also, there are some foods that if you don't cook them, such as meats, if you don't cook them, it creates problems. And that, I heard the ding. That means our boat is ready to be made. Yep. Exactly as much as I thought. Three vines and four... Uh, oh, 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 that was not all I intended to do. There we go. Let's go ahead and build that. We have to set it on the water. And we are off. And as you can see... Well, I guess it's about as fast as moving on land, but there are many boats that are a lot faster than this, so it feels very slow. These waves here can cause us problems if we go into them at the wrong angle, however, if we hit them at the correct angle, we can get a little speed boost out of them. So, typically when sailing, especially in the early game, I prefer to just kind of go with the flow. It makes us a little bit faster, and makes it so there's very little risk of anything actually going wrong. Now, while we're at sea, I'd like to gather a little bit of food, at least enough to get by tonight, because we're actually out of food aside from coconuts, which, while coconuts are good, they require us to use our machete to get them, and I'd prefer to save this machete just to get some more uh, vines and bamboo, as our boat will inevitably sink. Well, boat is honestly a very generous term. This is a dingy raft, but it's slightly faster than the wooden raft, so I'm happy with it. Here we can see a dogfish. We can't quite catch those yet. In fact, I don't think I've ever legitimately caught a dogfish in this. I know you can do it, but I'm thinking about what's a efficient way to do it. Ooh, there's some berries on this island here. Let's go ahead and exit our boat for now. Now, usually, ooh, I see a gold, uh, gold rock. Now, gold is something that the first time I played through this, I literally went to day 15 without finding any gold, which is murder in this game. 
But we found some gold this time, and it'll get us some extra rocks and some flint as well. Let's go ahead and pick all that up. Now gold will allow us to make a science machine, which is what we're going to need to get our base going. Ideally, we'll have more gold, but there's actually an alternative way of getting gold in Shipwreck that's kind of interesting. Now, I would explore that island further, but I... Oh, <laughs> speak of, there is an, ex an alternative way of getting gold. Those pirate parrots will actually drop doubloons, which aren't exactly the same as gold, but once you have a science machine, I believe, it might require an alchemy engine, but I believe it's just a science machine. Oh, let's go ahead over to here. Um, once you have that, you actually can refine those into gold nuggets, which you can use for other crafting things. Or there's other uses for doubloons themselves. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, is that the button? No. How do I unequip something? Can I, do I just go over to here? Yeah, I guess I have to go over there. I don't want to mine these limpet rocks, because then we won't get limpets out of them again. And this is, for now, decent food. In fact, if I recall, to give you an idea of how terrible the limpet rocks are, if I go here... Yeah, maybe starving wouldn't be so bad. Um, this has plenty of bamboo on this island, but we actually have a lot of bamboo already. We only need one more. What we need are vines. Let's go ahead and get our machete equipped. I'm starting to get used to these controls, actually. One thing I knew that from playing Don't Starve before, Don't Starve is definitely a game that is built to be played on any console. Like, it doesn't matter if it's uh, a regular console game, a PC. It feels natural on all of them. So, I knew I'd be able to adjust fairly easily. Okay, let's just grab enough to be able to build a boat. You see, what I like to do, and this is advice from a friend that I got, um, it's my friend Dan who said this. What you should do is always have a boat built. Because once you do that, see the uh, vines and such were taken from my inventory, but now there's a little blue icon of the boat. I'm actually carrying that entire boat with me without taking up an inventory slot. <laughs> Oh, well, by the way, sorry if I'm a little bit sniffly. I um, am currently, I have allergies at the moment. They're starting to pass, so it's not so bad anymore, but it's hard to avoid. And also, the reason why I'm using up my boat still a little bit is because I'm pretty sure I found out everything that's on this island of value, so I'm going to be moving on to the next. Hmm, I don't have a torch, though. Can I make a torch? No, I can't, actually. I need extra twigs. Wow, I'm really low on twigs, actually. Let's go ahead and just grab some twigs so that I can make a torch just in case I don't fight another island by the time it's dark. Because, well, ooh, bees. Bees will be valuable later on, but not at the moment. In fact, if I recall correctly, bees stay active in this in this particular version in everywhere except for the dry season, so bees are actually very valuable. But, ooh, and there is a pig over there. Not less valuable, they're not exactly the friendliest bunch, unless you give them food. Yeah... But these bees will be quite valuable. <laughs> Excuse me. And yeah, he goes home immediately, so do all the bees. It's so close to dark, I probably shouldn't explore anymore tonight. Let me check the map real quick. So, part of why I keep on like beginning the sentence and not even finishing it... The reason why I keep bringing my boat with me, despite that it uses up a little bit of it, is I don't want it to be on the other side of the island when I have to go, because then I have to travel all the way back. Ooh, I see a, I see a crate over there. Crates are very useful this early on in the game. Let's go ahead and get that. Ooh, and there's another crate over there. Uh, you know what? These boards are actually kind of useful now that I have enough inventory space for them. I'm going to keep them. But, ooh, rope as well. Is that all? Yeah. Um, I'm going to grab some seashells because picking up seashells restores our sandy a little bit. But other than that, it uh, looks like there's nothing really of value any further. Okay, let's go ahead and get our fire crafted for today. Hmm. You know, it's occurring to me that these rocks I'm gathering are a lot less valuable than they normally are because usually rocks are very valuable because you'll be getting, um, you want to make a fire pit so that you can have an easy to remake fire. However, that's not so much the case right now because what we actually want to get is some coral to make a fire pit first. It sounds a bit weird, but basically what we want to make is limestone. And if we make a fire pit out of limestone, it'll be safe from the high winds that'll come during hurricane season. So we're basically going to need to make that anyway. May as well make that instead of making a regular fire pit in the first place. And okay, I really... Okay, uh, oh, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, build that. Build. Okay. No shenanigans this time. Let's just go ahead and gather up the resources immediately around us. 
And let's cook these limpets up. That should be enough to get us full, I think. Yeah, that probably should be enough. Uh, left side. These controls are a little bit weird. I'm used to mousing over the fire pit and right clicking, but honestly, this isn't much all that different. And by the way, limpins will actually drop your sanity a fair amount if you don't cook them first. Also, it looks like we are still gaining health, which means we are a little bit damaged. I wasted some of those. That was dumb of me. Wasting food is something I can kind of afford in Reign of Giants because I always know ways of getting food, but in this, less so. Food doesn't respawn quite as quickly. I can rely on seaweed, which we haven't actually seen any seaweed yet, have we? Let me look across the ocean we've gone across. No, we haven't seen even a sing Oh, wait, no, there's a little bit of seaweed that we saw offshore earlier, but not where we actually launched our boat. Hmm. What was that noise? I heard hissing. I know there's different noises at night in this game. Ah, uh, then it's typical don't starve. Oh, he seems to be going straight for seeds. Um, but yeah, there's some noises that I've noticed I've heard in Shipwreck that throw me off a little bit. Because sometimes noises warn you that something's coming, and... I don't know. Uh, where's my boat? Down here. Okay. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and collect these limits. I didn't realize we'd actually missed these. We're running very low on inventory space, though. I might just drop those doubloons because they're not all that valuable yet, and... Granted, it takes like three doubloons to equal one gold nugget, which is something we'll be needing later on, but we'll probably find enough gold for an alchemy engine before we find a decent island to set up on. That's one thing that I find takes so much longer than this, because we have to worry about sea travel. Ooh, there is some seaweed over there. But because we have to worry about sea travel, it seems to take so much longer to find a decent place to set up. Plus, you, I basically am... Ooh, it looks like the waves are still going north today, so we won't have to go backwards at all. Let's just go ahead and head north with those. Yeah, setting up a base takes much longer, and especially if the waves are against you, you sometimes might want to go back the way you came, which is kind of annoying, and it creates some difficulties. Also, we are going out into the deep ocean now. I don't think we've done this yet. There's a lot more waves out here, but as long as we're going with them, that's actually a good thing. If we're going against them, however, that can be a very bad thing for our health. And at some points later in the game, there are some larger waves that are very much a threat to us. Unless we're playing a certain character, in which case they are your best friend. But that's something to worry about later. But you can kind of tell by how deep the ocean is, how close you are to an island. Like right now, we are not close to an island at all. And ooh, there's some fog here. That means there's probably, yep, a watery grave here. This is where a ship sunk, but we can get some decent materials out of that. If I recall correctly, by picking the limpets off of that watery grave, we can actually get a decent amount of... I believe we get three of them. Also, we have a trunk here. This is basically a treasure chest. And, ooh, there's some unspoiled seaweed in here. That's unusual. And a shovel, which is also quite rare at the moment. But I actually don't see any real value in it because... We can set up a science machine just about any time, although I'd rather set it in a place where we won't have to come back to it. Well, we'd or rather leave it behind, but shovels aren't that valuable, and I can't think of anything I would need a shovel for this early on in the game. Let's see now. Oh, looks like we have some shallows over here, so we actually might have an island nearby. Which is good. Well, we're only halfway through the day. I was going to say we're getting close to evening, but we're really not. And right now, the seas are very safe for us, luckily. It's not until later seasons that they actually become threatening. Which is something that's kind of interesting. Once a full year has passed, the idea is that we actually do go into... Our, it is this season that's so nice. And oh, we might have actually gone kind of past an island. Because we're still in the shallows here. But we're getting back into the... Yeah, we're back in the depths. Apparently there's an island more to the left of us and behind us, but... We went past it, so it's not really worth going back to. Oh, and there's more shallows over here now. Also, need to make sure I hit these waves at the correct angle. Otherwise, I risk thoroughly damaging my boat and getting myself soaking wet, which is a whole different threat in and of itself. Which, by the way, before the next season comes in roughly 20 days, or rather, yeah, roughly 20 days, uh, I'll be on day 21, if I recall, that the next season starts. Um, we want to have some, not only some, uh, a protected fire pit, but we also want two other things. We want raincoats, which we can get from snakeskin, and we also want to have a lightning rod ready, because it's hurricane season, there's going to be a lot of storms, so we don't want to get soaking wet so that we get the raincoat, and there's going to be a lot of lightning, and we don't want our base to burn down, and oh, we are at the edge of the map now. 
If we go into there, we'll basically reappear on the other side of the map, but being at the edge of the map isn't such a bad thing. While there are fewer islands, we might be able to find something valuable, in fact, necessary to survive the later seasons. You see, there's one thing that, from what I'm told, is always near the edge of the map, but here's the thing, I have never actually found it myself. It's called the Volcano, and supposedly in the dry season, Ro flaming rocks fall from the sky to kill you, and you have to offer sacrifices at the volcano, or snackrifices, as I'm told they're called. And if you want to do that, well, you probably want to set up near the volcano, because in summer, you can actually die of exposure. So that's something to worry about. And, ooh, we have coral here. Okay, this is actually very nice for us. Let's go ahead and kind of get out of the ways, because this is considered a shallow... Oh, no, it's not considered a shallow zone. No, no, it's definitely considered a shallow zone. Uh, let's see, where is my pickaxe? Right there, it doesn't have much left in it, but if we mine this coral, which is a horrible thing to do in real life, I do not advocate that, but um, here it is actually good for our survival. We're going to want to mine as much coral as we can, because it's actually used for a few things. By the way, you can see all those fish underwater there. We need a new pickaxe, which I think we have plenty of flint for. Yeah, we got plenty of flint. But, um... Yeah, we're going to need this to get a covered fire pit, which I can't remember the actual name for it is. But we are will definitely be needing to survive it. Ooh, it's getting late. We might need to survive by torchlight tonight. Mm, excuse me. Uh, let's get out of the way of that wave. We have nearly enough coral now. And by the way, yeah, like I was saying, those fish that are uh, gathered together like that, that shoal... That is where you can actually go fishing. You can't just go fishing anywhere. You have to either do it in a tidal pool or a shoal. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything. In fact, I don't think it even lets you. Ooh, I see some regular fog over there, not thick fog like the edge of the world. Oop. Um, that wave's going to break. Yeah, it is. Okay. I think we have enough coral now. So I'm going to go ahead and keep moving on. I'm going to, however... Oh, I do not want to stop to do that. I'm going to make a torch, a torch, oh, I, well, at least I have enough to make another one, because apparently Wilson decided it would be a brilliant idea to just throw it in the water, and it sunk immediately, the balloons don't sink, but a torch does, I do not see the logic, um, I actually did not, oh, I hit a wave there. Uh, I did not know that happened, actually, and we are definitely near a watery grave here if there's this much fog. Or are we not? Yeah, I don't see any. By the way, fishing in a watery grave can have some interesting effects, and ooh! Uh-oh. Uh... Why can't I cope that? Okay, there we go. So, this is how we're surviving tonight. You see, if we actually try to move, since he has to pick up the ore to row, we put out our torch. Which is not only terrible for Sandy, but terrible for our health. And as long as the waves aren't getting too close to us, I won't have to move. So, yeah, there's a reason why I prefer to find an island before it gets dark. This is actually quite dangerous to survive this way. And also, our boat is nearing half its duration. You see, every time we hit a wave, it takes a solid chunk out of it. I want to say, for this type of rickety raft, it probably takes around 10% of its time out. So, that's a pretty significant chunk. Also, wow, I have been recording for 30 minutes. That is... Man, time flies when you are playing this game. I think I'm going to find land and end this episode off here. And... Daylight. I could have put it out a little bit long earlier and been fine, but... Okay, did, are the waves seriously still going north? You know, I didn't want to do this, but... I assume the waves would change today. I'm going to go into... Yeah, we are starting to get some duration loss in our boat. Oh, and I hit a wave. God. <sighs> oh, yeah, that takes a solid chunk of our stand deal away. But if you look at the map now, if I can zoom out, we are a long ways away from where we were. And it seems like the map is significantly smaller. Maybe it's smaller on co console edition or something. Wouldn't surprise me. But, um... Yeah, at least now we're able to explore while moving with the waves instead of against them, because moving against the waves with a half-health boat is kind of suicide. Also, this looks like a watery grave. I see a shoal here. 
Lots of fog. Maybe we'll find a ship to pick. Because as soon as I find land, I'm going to want food. I do not see anything. Uh, we're still at the edge of the world, though. I guess we're on the right edge? Hmm. Now let me check where I'm going. Yeah, I'm still going to be exploring completely new territory here, so... Staying close to the edges is that big a deal. And this is kind of the shallows here. Well, not, not shallows, but not in the deepest part of the ocean yet. Whoop, that was kind of a weird buggy bit from Wilson, but I guess that's what happens when you're using a controller. Sometimes it doesn't know how to react. <laughs> but... Yes, I get it. Here be monsters, Wilson. I really hope we find land soon, because this is actually starting to get risky. And I did build a second boat just in case. That's why I do it, is in case your boat is at its limits while at sea, you can still set one down. And trust me, you want to do that, it can save your life. It has saved mine on a number of occasions. Because, in case you haven't guessed, Wilson can't swim. Neither can any of the characters in this game for some reason. Or at least they can't swim at sea. Well, even if they're in the shallows, they don't survive. Yep, and Wilson is getting very hungry. Hungry. These are proper shallows this time, though. I'm actually going to explore these because we're not actually against the wa the waves anymore. Let's see, there's got to be an island here somewhere. Shallows like this don't just appear for no reason. So let's go ahead and grab those because we're going to need all the food we can get. Oh my god, did I actually pull out my sh my torch while I was doing that? I did. I I didn't realize I had my, my torch attached. Oh well, it's... I would need a new one before dark anyway. But we have discovered land. I am going to explore this one primarily in the next episode. Yeah, we're not anywhere near dying at this exact moment. Ooh, there's the balloons over there. Wait a minute. I didn't see a parrot leave this area. If there's the balloons on this island. This might be a very special island. Ooh. Okay, it's not the kind of island I was thinking of. I thought it might be a treasure island, but this does have a swamp, which is very valuable because it has reeds, it has tidal pools, and if we're lucky... Oh my god, this has a volcanic area too. That means we have an access to gold. Okay, this isn't the best area... Wait a minute, is that the kind of fish... Ah, oh, no, it's a typical merm hut. Merms are not your friends. However, there's a type of merm hut that is very friendly if we can find it. Wow, there's a lot of gold on this island. And I don't want to explore through the, the swamp right now because those little eyes sticking up at us are very dangerous. At least early on when you do not have armor. They're not nearly as dangerous as tentacles, but they're a lot harder to avoid. But, yeah, there is plenty to be found here. Ooh, and spiders. Yeah, this might be a decent island to set up on. If only there was... Oh, I would like to zoom in now. If only there was jungle to set up in. If this island has jungle on it, this is a very good island. But I don't think it has jungle anywhere. But lots of gold. It's at least a resource-intensive island that will allow us to get established before any, before setting out to find a better place to get a better home. And like I said before, ideally I'd like to set up near the volcano, but I might have to deal with setting up a second home there. That's stuff for me to concern myself with in the next episode, though. That's going to be it for now, guys. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time when we continue this playthrough of Don't Starve, Shipwrecked. See you then.